The 1830s were a very dynamic time. This is the time when slavery enters in a big way into the national political arena. It was a very violent period. Mob violence was a real problem. Lynchings, murders. It's a brutal, difficult time. Lots of people are concerned about whether or not this American experiment is going to survive. Alexis de Tocqueville visits the United States in 1831 and writes a glowing book, Democracy in America. Some say the greatest book ever written about the United States, as well as the greatest book written about democracy. And yet, it's a period of considerable upheaval related to the rule of law. And that's, I think, what drew Lincoln to the Lyceum Address on that historic night in January of 1838. The Lyceum Address invites us into the mind of a younger Lincoln already thinking about the major issues of his time. Justice for all, irrespective of their background, that is what the Lyceum contributes like no other Lincoln speech. It is a profoundly prophetic speech. It's what we make of it rather than what was made of it at the time that I think is important. Abraham Lincoln was a self-educated lawyer. He was extremely ambitious. He was very well-read. He had educated himself. He came from humble beginnings. But what's remarkable about Lincoln is how thoughtful he is from a very young age. He moves from New Salem to Springfield, which becomes the capital of Illinois in 1837. Ultimately, he becomes an attorney and a state official. And that is the beginnings of his early political career right there in Springfield. Lincoln was invited to speak before a group that was called the Young Men's Lyceum of Springfield. These young men tended to debate questions that had to do with state and regional and national political issues. The word lyceum is from the Greek. It was the name of Aristotle's school. A lyceum is what we would call today a public lecture or an educational institution. Lyceums today might be something akin to your local library hosting guest speakers. These organizations were seen to be fun. You could do well, you could do not so well. Lyceums were forums for the expression of democratic values and the virtues of what it means to be an American, how to be a good American, how to be a good person. And so the topics of the day were discussed there in a public setting. So Lincoln is invited to give this speech at the Lyceum. And for his topic, he chooses the perpetuation of our political institutions. He does that because he sees American democracy under attack because of the rise of mob violence over the issue of slavery. Lincoln, in his Lyceum Address, mentions three series of murders, the first of which occur in 1835. There had been a pamphlet circulated suggesting that there was going to be a slave insurrection throughout the state of Mississippi. And white gamblers at the time had long been vilified and disdained for their craft. The fears stirred by this would-be fanciful insurrection were directed towards them because these white gamblers were somehow responsible for helping and aiding and abetting this prospective black insurrection in Mississippi. Well, that wasn't true, but they were linked to it. So many people were hanged. Black people, white people, they just hanged them without any due process of law for being suspected slave rebels or assisting slave rebellion. Lincoln says they've left them hanging on the trees of Mississippi like the Spanish moss. And then we have the killing of the white abolitionist Elijah Lovejoy, who wrote very vehemently and increasingly so against slavery, but also condemned in harsh language the burning of Francis McIntosh, a free black man in St. Louis. Lovejoy was forced to leave St. Louis and set up his print shop in Alton, Illinois, the southern part of Illinois, a free state. Nevertheless, he was tracked down and months later, 
killed there and his printing press famously thrown into the river. Each of these events, Lincoln highlights, and I think importantly, links them together as part of this abandonment of what Washington and others hoped for in this country, which is if someone is guilty, there's a process. We go through a judicial process. We don't just string people up on trees or shoot them or burn them. He goes on to explain why recourse to the rule of law and to the courts is the thing that can hold Americans together amid all of these disagreements and differences that that's all we have. And Lincoln is not pro-slavery by any stretch of the imagination. He is definitely anti-slavery in sentiment. You can see that right from the start of his political career in the resolutions of the Illinois legislature of 1837 against abolitionists that he protests against. That's taking a political risk. Abolitionists are not popular. They're being attacked by people who are part of the status quo. Lincoln saw this as the giving up to the passions rather than reason. Sober reason must be our salvation. Otherwise, we're going to fall prey to these passions that will lead the nation to commit what he calls suicide. It is certainly the case that features of the subject matter in 1837 resonate throughout American history. There are many moments of extreme violence. There are many moments of racially motivated violence. There are moments of mob violence. There are worries and concerns about the longevity of our democracy, the health of our democracy. Those themes and topics recur. So looking at the way Lincoln and others of his time were grappling with these questions, it can help us think through our own present moment. One of the things that Lyceum activity did encourage was thoughtful reflection, debate, listening to others. There are features of this text that I think can help us think through for ourselves how we want to live our own lives. <laughs>